As you saw at the last Democratic primary debate, Pete Buttigieg didn't just vociferously argue against Medicare for All, but what was interesting is he used the exact same talking points that materialized from within the health insurance industry. Now, not too long ago, he sounded really different when it comes to the issue of Medicare for All. In fact, he was a supporter of Medicare for All. So back in February of 2018, the People's Summit had called him out for not supporting Medicare for All, but he pushed back on Twitter saying, when slash where have you ever heard me oppose Medicare for All? Now understand that the reason why they called him out was because he didn't explicitly vocalize support for it. But he pushed back right there and responded saying, I, Pete Buttigieg, politician, do henceforth and forthwith declare most affirmatively and indubitably unto the ages that I do favor Medicare for all as I do favor any measure that would help get all Americans covered. So that's what he said back in February of 2018, but you actually don't have to go back that far to see Pete Buttigieg supporting Medicare for All because this year he posted a picture of a receipt that said Medicare for All and he responded saying, I'm on it. Now, on top of that, in an interview with Morning Joe on MSNBC, um, he described Medicare for All in a way that I thought was brilliant. He said, you know, this isn't really a radical idea. This is the real compromise if you consider the ACA being right-wing reform and, you know, a, a national health system like we see in the UK being the true left-wing reform. But really, Medicare for All, it's not as extreme as Republicans want us to believe. This is what he said specifically. You know, ACA, which was a conservative proposal, came to be caricatured as left-wing by a very disciplined right-wing message machine, right? What is Medicare for all? It's a compromise. I mean, in the UK, you got national health care. That would be the left wing, the true left wing position. The true right wing position is free for all, all corporate. And the compromise position is a single payer system where you have private doctors, but a public payer. Uh, we've got to stop allowing the right to move the, the goalposts. So that's what he was saying about Medicare for all as recently as February. He supported it. Um, but fast forward a couple of months later, and he's putting out attack ads against Medicare for All. He actually has run two to date. Um, on top of that, at the debate, we saw him take on Elizabeth Warren for her position of Medicare for All, uh, accusing her of wanting to eliminate choice and blowing up the private insurance market. But, you know, it wasn't just at the debate where he attacked Medicare for All and was relentless because the day after the debate, he wasn't finished attacking Medicare for All and spreading misinformation about Medicare for All because this is what he said. Here's some new criticisms that he raised about Medicare for All. It sounds very familiar if you listen closely. Talk about that moment that we just played in our intro where you went at it with Senator Elizabeth Warren about her Medicare for All plan and you wanted a simple yes or no answer of will she raise taxes and and what she ended up saying time and again was Americans household costs will come down with her plan what does it matter to you what bucket it comes out of well not only is it important to have yes or no answers to yes or no questions at a time when people are so frustrated with washington speak but also there's still been no explanation for a multi-trillion dollar hole in this plan i have a lot of respect for senator warren but last night she was more specific and forthcoming about the number of selfies she's taken than about how this plan is going to be funded and that's a real problem especially when there's a better way to deliver health care coverage to everybody Look, what most Americans want is to have an opportunity to walk away from their private plan, to have that what I call Medicare for all who want it alternative, but also to be able to keep their private plan if they would prefer. And I think that's the right answer, especially when you do the math and realize it's also an answer that is paid for, unlike the Medicare for all, whether you want it or not plans uh, that still have this giant question mark over how it's supposed to work. So now he's asking, how are we going to pay for Medicare for all? On top of that, he is implying that we're not really even sure how Medicare for All will work in practice. And let me explain something to you. These aren't just Republican talking points. These are health industry talking points. Even industry insiders see that that's the case. Because as Wendell Potter tweeted out, I can't tell if Pete Buttigieg is campaigning for president or my old job at Cigna. Mayor Pete, DM me if you want to know how insurance companies really operate. So the question is, 
what changed? What got Pete Buttigieg to change his position on Medicare for All that quickly? Because just months after uh, proudly and boldly declaring support for it time and again, all of a sudden now he seems like he's using the same talking points that the industry uses. Uh, he sounds like a Republican, quite frankly. So what changed? Well, um, if you follow the money, you'll know exactly what has changed. He started taking money from the health insurance industry. And no, he's not just taking, you know, a few dollars here and there. When it comes to total donations, total health industry campaign contributions out of the entire Democratic Party 2020 primary field, do you want to know who's number one? It's Pete Buttigieg. Pete Buttigieg has gotten more money from the health insurance industry than every other Democratic candidate. In fact, the only individual running in 2020 to outspend Mayor Pete is Donald Trump, the sitting president. So looking at this chart here, as you can see, he took $548,000 in total from the health insurance industry. Now, to be clear, this does include small and large campaign contributions. So, you know, there is a percentage of Mayor Pete's health sector donations that probably came from people who just, you know, work at hospitals or who are nurses. And that's why you see Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren on this list as well. But what's different about Pete Buttigieg is he hasn't sworn off fundraisers. He hasn't sworn off big money. In fact, he's actually taking quite a lot of big money and more than 50% of his total individual contributions came from large campaign donations, likely bundled by rich donors in fundraisers that he held in the Hamptons. So if you're wondering why he sounds so different, you know, uh, when it comes to Medicare for all, there's a clear reason why he sounds like a health industry stooge. It's because he is one. He sold out. He took their money and it corrupted him that quickly in a matter of months going from supporting Medicare for all to using the same lines of attack as Trump uses against Medicare for all. How sad is that? How pathetic is that? That he sold out and aligned with the health insurance industry to actively deceive voters and join their disinformation campaign to drive down support for single payer Medicare for all. Look, it doesn't matter to Pete that without single payer, Americans will continue to die every single year. What matters to him is these for-profit insurance vultures are helping him get elected. So he's willing to turn a blind eye and sell the American people out if it means advancing his own career. And he says all of this about Medicare for all while denouncing the duplicity and doublespeak that politicians use in Washington, D.C. No, Pete, you're no different than any of these insiders in D.C., you're part of the problem. And in fact, you're one of the worst offenders because more people in D.C., when they take money, when they get bought off, they try to hide it better. But you're not even trying to hide it. You're wearing your corruption on your sleeve. Just this February, you were talking about why we should do Medicare for all. And all of a sudden, you sound like a health industry executive. That's disgusting. That's embarrassing. It doesn't matter to you that passing Medicare for all would literally save lives. You are perfectly satisfied with the pro-death status quo if it means that these for-profit insurance industry vultures will help you get elected. Well, that's disgusting. And you really demonstrated what a horrible human being you are. You shouldn't just lose this race, but your career in politics should be finished permanently. Because you showed all of us your true colors, that you're willing to sell out if the price is right. And that's incredibly disgusting. It says a lot about you. It says that you're not in this to help normal Americans. You're in this for self-aggrandizement. Shame on you. You're absolutely disgusting. I can't wait until he drops out. And I would tell him to stay in South Bend, but it doesn't really seem like his constituents there are very happy with him either. So maybe you should just do what we all know you're going to do and become a lobbyist for the health industry or, you know, some lobbying for in DC because that's what you're going to do. You were a consultant for McKinsey and we all know at the end of the day you're going to be another one of these multimillionaires who uh, makes a ton of money getting the government to not do policies that the American people want, that a majority of Democratic Party primary voters support. So shame on you for spreading misinformation. That's just, that's disgusting. That is, you know, there's a different kind of evil to that, right? Just not supporting a policy in and of itself, being apathetic, that's a problem. But to actively try to drive down support for a policy that the grassroots has been fighting for, that shows how loathsome you are, not just as a politician, Pete, but as a human being.